Hi there. Welcome back to my shop. For today's project, I have this piece of wood and this is Dunno wood, <laughs> which means I don't know what it is. I am not very good at wood identification. I have said that many times and it hasn't changed. It has a fairly obvious grain pattern here on the sapwood particularly and some on the heartwood. Now the pith on this tree or branched limb, whatever it was, I believe was just not too far off of here, just judging by the way the growth rings are here on the heartwood. So staying away from that a little bit, I'm going to use this center finder to find what I want to be the nominal center of this. As you can see, it's pretty much three inches in this diameter. So I'll stay a little bit away from this side and that will give me this as the center to work with. Now I'm going to use a faceplate ring on here. So I'll put it on there centered. To do that, I'm going to use a compass to mark the radius to find the diameter of this. Now, I have already pre-measured the center of this hole to this hole, it's two and five eighths. And I've had people in the past ask me, how do I find the center between two holes? Well, if you try putting the one inch mark, for instance, on the center of this hole, and then visually finding the center, it looks like two and five eighths. But to be precise, you want to measure from the outside of a hole to the inside of the ring on this one. And that does give us two and five eighths of an inch. If I do it on the other side, where the holes are even smaller, you can see again, it's two and five eighths of an inch. So I have set my compass to half of that, which is one and five sixteenths of an inch. And I will draw this circle. Okay, so these holes should line up right on there. What I want to do is pre-drill the first hole and I will pre-drill it right on that spot. That way these holes are not getting too close to the edge anywhere. They're about as far away as I can keep them. So I'm going to pre-drill this, put the screws in for this, and I'll be back to do that in a moment. All right, I have a brad point bit. It's a 13 64ths of an inch bit, which fits just perfectly in these holes. So what I'm going to do is put it through this one, put the brad point right on the edge of that circle I've drawn, and I'm going to use that to identify where the first hole is going to go. I have a 1 8 inch bit that I'm going to use to pre-drill this. Again, it's a brad point, so I can set it right in there. All right, now let's just see how easily this screw will go in here. I'll get that first one put in here. Now I'll mark the second one. Like it'll be right there. Slightly off the line, but that's fine. All 
All right. Now I'm sure someone out there is thinking, putting screws into end grain is not a good idea. And you're right, it's not really. But this is the way I'm going to hold this. It was either that or a woodworm screw. And I believe this will hold a little better because of the fact there are four. But what I want to do is put this on the lathe now. I simply want to get this to a state of being round, then put a tenon on this end to hold it more securely, and we'll take it from there. So I hope you'll stick around and join me at the lathe. As I'm sure you'll be able to see, this face is not 90 degrees to the bedways. So the first thing I have to do is flatten this and then create a tenon so I can reverse this into a chuck to hold it. And for the first few seconds, I'm going to bring up my tail stock with the live center just to be sure that this is going to be running true. And I will start this turning, then bring in the live center to let it find its own spot. I'm going to be turning this at 1000 RPM and I will start with a half inch bowl gouge. All right, now, one question you might be wondering about is why am I doing this on the end before I turn this to a cylinder? It would be much easier to turn this to a cylinder and then put a tenon on here, or at least to true this up. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. I occasionally like to turn square plates, uh, things that are not round, and any chance I get to practice those cuts, I take that. It's an opportunity to practice. Now, I haven't done a great job on here, but I got a little practice. Now I'm going to turn this to a cylinder. Before you turn the power on to your lathe, make sure that your piece is clearing your tool rest. Otherwise, you could have some serious issues. All right. I'm going to be turning at 1000 RPM using my inch and a quarter spindle roughing gouge. You may be able to see this flat goes down to where it is smaller than the faceplate ring. And I don't want to hit that. So I'm going to taper from here and make it a little smaller on this end. And now that I'm seeing more of this figure in the grain, I'm wondering if this is not elm. It sure looks like it. For some reason, it sure does want to chip out right in this spot.
I am so used to using mortises that I grab the wrong dividers. These are the ones set up for using with a tenon. Now one thing I have to keep in mind is that these screw holes go down here about an inch and I don't want them coming through the sides. Otherwise I have to figure out some way to disguise that. If you do not like using your gouge to go in there and create the hole to start back hollowing, the other way to do it is simply to use a Forstner bit, go in there, drill to the depth you want, and then use that hole for your back hollowing. I'm going to do this at 250 RPM with a one inch Forstner bit. I think I'd better sand the outside now before it gets too thin and I'll also, also do the part inside here that's turned. Now this is turned well enough that I should be able to start with 150 grit. Then I'll use 220 and 280 and then I'm going to use axe pastes on here.
I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but I can see light through the side of this piece right now and not over here. So it's getting a little thinner. Maybe my finger creating a shadow there shows it up better. So I have to stop getting thinner or I'm going to go through the side of this thing. Now I will keep recording this, but I won't show you every little piece I do. This will take forever. So I hope you enjoy what I'm doing and I will be back. Now it was never my intention to make a thin turning, but because this was so small, the faceplate ring screws were very close to the edge here. So I didn't really have a lot of choice, but I'll try not to <laughs> destroy this completely. All right. I got that little ridge there, but I think I'm going to have to do that with sandpaper. And I do not have a bowl gouge small enough to get right into the bottom there to clean that up. I've checked a few of them. <laughs> so I either leave it like that and say I tried with just bowl gouges or I clean that up with a carbide tool. And I just don't think I could leave it like that and be at all satisfied. So I'm going to get in here with this and just do the bottom with this carbide scraper. I have slowed this down to 1000 RPM. See if it's a little easier to control. Well, that's looking pretty good down there in the bottom. And I think it's time to just sand this.